Right, okay. Um, I am Jennifer from the Musicians' Union, as some of you know. Um, and we're going to be doing Getting Gigs Abroad. So I'm just going to go around the panel and get you to give a wee background about yourself so that people know. Okay, I'm Jamie Webster. Uh, I run a company called Instinctive Raccoon, which is a music promotions and management company. Uh, and within that, I manage bands such as uh, Three Wine Wolves, Washington Irving and Over the Wall. And um, I've booked tours in Holland and America and obviously UK as well. I'm Toby Shippey. I've uh, been playing music for about 20 years now and d done a lot of tours abroad in Holland and America and booked a lot of the gigs ourselves with lots of different bands and bits and pieces. Hi guys, I'm The Late Substitute. My name's Tam Coyle. I'm a manager, promoter, DJ based in Glasgow. I, Olaf asked me to step in about seven minutes ago, so I'm just writing my notes as I go along. A recent international touring, one of the bands I help out with is a band from Portland, Oregon, with the wonderful name of Loch Lomond, who have just done a nine-country international tour all the way through Europe, coming back, finishing the UK before they went back to the States. So that's my very recent international tour. I've also worked with bands over the years, touring primarily North America, a couple of Asian tours, but primarily through agents. I mean, Toby's got some very different examples of being self-centred and self-funded. I've used the traditional route of using my international trading partners much more than trying to hustle through the internet, etc. But there's two ways of doing it, as we'll discuss over the next hour. Right, so we know that if you're a band here, you can either kind of hide a venue and just promote the gig yourself, avoiding ticket deals and stuff like that, and you can kind of do that around the UK. You might get a gig at Go North, you know, you might go to Great Escape, something like that. There's things that you can do, and you can get maybe small fees now and then. But I guess the point of this panel is to think about, right, should we do that, or should, or, you know, should we just go to Germany for a month? Or should we do a tour of Europe, and if we do, how much is it going to cost? Because if you do generally at a certain level, if you do a tour of the UK, it's, it's going to cost you money. But what we want to find out is if we were to go to Europe instead, could it at least break even or could money even be made? I'll put it to Jamie first. Okay. Um, well, I think generally the first couple of times it's always going to cost money, whether it's in UK or whether it's Europe or America. Um, how much money, I guess, you know, depends on what kind of level you're at. I would always advise that you should tour start if you're starting off tour in scotland first of all whether it be eight dates ten dates and then make sure because the budget i mean when you're doing your budget it's, it's the same thing whether it be in europe or whether it be in the uk and you've got to make sure you've got accommodation covered you've got a uh, diesel covered van hire tour manager all these things so i would always advise you to do scotland first make sure you get a handle of that first make sure you've got merchandise to sell because it's going to be impossible to break even without it um, and then build it up, gradually do UK and then into Europe. That's what I would always advise. Yeah, I, I would say do the same thing, you know, play as much as you can in Scotland. But it's really great to, to kind of uh, break out and get over to Europe. When we were about 18, we just got a van and drove over to Holland and lived on a barge in Amsterdam and played around squats for, uh, for three weeks. Got incredibly stoned, but um, <laughs> it's good for the band, you know, like going away somewhere like that, like the Beatles going to Hamburg and playing can make a band really, so I think that's kind of what being in a band's about, so it's worth doing. Tam, in your experience, if you were at the level where you could get 50 quid out the toll booth here, <laughs> would you be able to get the same out of somewhere in Berlin or Paris? Didn't know the toll booth had put its fees up. Sorry Stephen. <laughs> uh, it's very difficult, as, as Jamie alluded to, in the first couple of tours to make money in, in Europe. I would say, to, it's changed a wee bit since Toby's younger days. <laughs> Certainly, recently, you know, EU legislation, etc., and, and even taxation things. It's very difficult now for a young band to be under the radar. And I can think of bands going to North America, even bigger bands from, from uh, the English region. Certainly a band got caught going to South by Southwest last month, not having a visa, get turned back at the airport. And that was a, was it Benjamin Lefwich, whatever his name is? Francis Lefwich. Even a band with a bit of profile in UK try to go under the radar. And certainly with two artists I've worked with the last two years, we've been standing at, at going through immigration and they literally have your name and they Google your name and they can find your band camp and your, your MySpace, your Facebook, etc. So trying to do things under the radar, whether it's, you know, even Europe or, or North America is much more difficult than it was even five, ten years ago. So you've got to get all your various paperwork in order, I would suggest, before you leave the country. Because after you've done all the hard work to get there, 
it's a complete boot in the balls if you get kicked back at the border before you start your tour. Okay, so I hear rumours that you're treated a lot better in Europe than you are in the UK and that the fees are better and things like that, right? So you might be able to at least make a tour break even if you were to do that. But how do you get the gigs? How do I find out where to go if I want to play Germany, Paris? Who, how do I find out who these people are? Well, I think it's always good. I mean, if you want to get into Holland or you want to get into Germany, I think you need to kind of keep your eye out for other bands touring so you can figure out where the venues are, you can figure out who the promoters are, um, who the agents are, and then you need to make sure you've got a good electronic press kit together, you've got good photographs, you've got good videos, and just send it out to as many people as possible. I mean, you might only get one response in every 20 emails, but you, you just need to get out there and get it out to as many people as possible. And I think as you do that, you'll build up relationships. And, and it may well be that you can't get a tour immediately when you want it, but you might get an opportunity to go out to, say, Eurosonic or a festival like that or Glimpse Festival or any of these um, in Europe, Reaper Band. And you might meet somebody there who's then able to open doors. So I always think there's only so much you can do with email and over the phone, but if you meet people in, in person, by going to these kind of festivals and networking, that's probably the best way to get into it. Certainly in Eurosonic, it's now over the last five, eight years become the premier networking event every January. It's held in uh, Holland and every agent, literally 200 festival bookers go to Eurosonic. Problem with Eurosonic is they won't let you perform unless you have an agent in place before, you know, they won't take unsigned bands. They, they, you've got to have an agent in place before you can even play Eurosonic. I mean, one of the things is you can do, but if you're talking about touring in Europe, you play these, do these big festivals, but you can also, you know, um, like you say, um, contact other bands. And um, the band Snarky Puppy were playing last night in Edinburgh, and Callum, had, he was not an, another musician, loved him, and he put the gig on and organised it all, and put them up and organised the whole thing. And we used to go over to Holland, and other bands would book us, and other bands in Germany would book us. And so, I, I mean, trying to break it in Europe is one thing, but if you just want to play gigs, you can, you know do Google searches of rock bars or different kind of bars that, or clubs and just approach them direct, you know, directly and see if you can get a gig and make your own way there and do a gig. I suppose it's a different way of doing it rather than trying to break it. If, if, if you want to go and play some gigs there, you can, you, you can always do gigs. Would it be worth a band going out just to do one gig? I don't know. You could get a couple of gigs and, you know, you might, you know, trying to make it or trying to, you know, trying to become a huge famous band. But if you want to go and play some gigs in Europe and you can go and do two gigs, you can get, you can get, a, you can get a really cheap ferry over to Holland or... Get a cheap flight and go and do a couple of gigs and enjoy it, you know? And, and that might be something which you'd meet somebody over there. And we, we went over to Holland, the first gig we did, we went back and played it for the next 10 years, you know? And played the Milkweg and played the Paradiso from doing tiny wee gigs in Amsterdam, went on to do a kind of bigger venue. So I, th I think that's just part of being a band, is enjoying that kind of traveling. Trying to break it's a different thing, you know? I wonder um, also about if you do manage to get a few gigs sorted out, I've had members phone up the office where they have been offered a gig at a festival abroad. They've went across, paid for their own flights, paid for their own accommodation, on the promise of a cheque, which then never arrived. So they never got the gig fee. They were out their flight money and they were out their accommodation. So it was a massive loss. And I'm not sure the gig was really worth it either. And um, so do you all use contracts or do you have agents who organize the contracts for you? And do you get paid in advance, that kind of thing? Yeah. Yeah, well, we always issue contracts um, for every show that we do. And uh, certainly for international stuff, we try and ask for 50% in advance so that you can cover your, your flights, hopefully, or your ferry, or whatever you need. Because uh, you, obviously you get quite a big outlay if you're going to mainland Europe or America or whatever. So you need to try and get some fee in advance if you can. Yeah, we always get... Nowadays, I always get 50% in advance, and then the other 50% is maybe transferred on the day of the gig, and you get all the contracts. I mean, you, you can always still get rip, rip, ripped off even when you do that, but and o always at least try and make them pay for the flights in advance. Like if, if they say, book your flights, you know, you're much better getting them to book the flights for you. So at, le at least they've paid for that, you know. Just on the flights issue, the other thing is sometimes the local promoter will book your flights. However, like the rest of us, with budgets being a problem, you sometimes get booked on the budget carriers and suddenly you could get hit with massive bills for extra baggage, etc. if you're taking all your instruments. So if you are going via one of the budget airlines, either Ryanscare or SleazyJet, make sure that you've hopefully got most of your equipment on hire at the other end or borrowing at the other end so you're not taking as much gear because baggage charges 
There's certainly me standing at the airport and being hit with three, four hundred pounds worth of baggage charges. If you don't watch yourself. That's true, actually. But something everyone should know is if you are at the airport and um, they're saying, OK, you have to take, you have to buy a seat for your guitar. You don't have to pay the taxis because taxis are only for humans. Okay. So if, any, if that happens, you can then go, fine, I'll buy a seat. But I'm not paying all the taxis. They're for humans and this is not a human. Um, so that's a wee trick that one of our members told us about, which was... Can you do really that? When you book the ticket on the online, how, how do you book it without I think you have to do it over the phone. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so that whole thing can be a nightmare. I don't think there is any airline that's any better than any other, though. It's always no, I think, I think Ryanair, the worst airline ever. I've, I've never been treated worse by any airline um, to do with being a musician and taking instruments. And uh, they're the most shocking airline. In fact, most bands refuse to fly them. And EasyJet are now like, EasyJet are like five-star flight compared to Ryanair because they'll let, quite often let you take instruments on. They're pretty relaxed about it. And the worst airport out of Scotland definitely is um, Prestwick. I mean, they're, they're rabid will chase after you and sort of try and grab any instruments you've got hidden in bags and they're like, they've got nothing else to do apart from trying to find musicians there. <laughs> and in BE, you're allowed to take a golf bag for free, but not a guitar. It's like, mm, priorities. Yeah. Anyway. Um, right. What I want to ask as well is merchandise. Obviously, at a certain level, you can kind of, you know, organise your meals and stuff from selling T-shirts. So here, I know that merchandise costs went up a few years ago. A lot of venues now taking 15 to 20%. How does it work in uh, venues abroad? Is it more of a free-for-all, or do they take more, or do they take less? Certainly from our experience so far, uh, I don't think we've been charged anywhere for merchandise. I think um, certainly I know that in America, at you know, a higher level, that they certainly take a cut. But uh, we've kind of flown under the radar so far, so... I, just, I know in America, a lot of the festivals, the, a lot of the bands that were touring were kind of foregoing part of their fee to get their entire merchandise fee. So there's quite a lot of kind of toing and froing on that when we were touring there. It was, a lot of merchandise was being sold. Is that part of the negotiation when you're first discussing it? Well, some bands, we, we didn't do that, but then the other bands were telling us, oh no, we, t we knocked a couple of grand off the fee and then made three times that back in merchandise because they were selling so much. So, Interesting. So it's yeah. worth thinking about then? Some, some things, would, some bands were doing that in some festivals, yeah. <clears throat> okay. In terms of tax problems with, um, I've heard of people basically organising a gig and they're told what the fee is, but then it turns out when they get their money and, you know, local taxes have been taken off that they don't know about. So you might think you're getting £500, but you only end up with 350 And then you're also then paying tax again when you get back to the UK. What do you do? Are you just really careful to make sure your contract says this fee that we've negotiated is net of any local taxes? Or... Does, is it better that you have an agent or can you do it yourself or is it so complicated that you need an accountant in your opinion or what would you say? Well I think it's good to have an agent definitely for these types of things but obviously you know, there might be people in the audience here who don't have agents and they want to go out and gig so I mean try and get things in, in contract I mean, I think um, certainly from my experience in America um, you'll get hit with central withholding if you, if you don't have a social security number so I mean, if you're going to be touring in America, I would suggest the first thing you do when you get to America is go and get a social security number, and then you can register that, and then because I think it's thirty percent of your fee they take off, yeah. um, which is quite, which is obviously a massive amount when you're just doing your first few tours. Um, I haven't had such a problem in Europe though as yet. There is certain th Germany sometimes have little taxes which come off in Italy. I think they all, it's all a bit, you kind of never know whether the promoter's kind of making it up or whether it's true, but certainly in America, we got a tax number, but then you get, you get, you're meant to file accounts, which is kind of annoying. You've got to file accounts with IRS when you finish the tour, but 